so how do you prevent and treat uh, um, aki so obviously prevention is better than cure okay so knowing the knowledge what are the risk factors that you have to de deal with you can prevent um, uh, aki so how do you treat you have fluids and other parameters we go one by one fluids how much fluid and there are multiple guidelines um, so every critically ill patient is associated with altered fluid status it can be uh, that is hypovolemia which can be absolute or relative relative because of vasodilatory shock and volume de uh, depletion and the fluid administration obviously improves the renal perfusion initially and uh, also helps with the better function of a kidney but um, but if it is not controlled or closely monitored we can see the other side of the intervention uh, that is fluid overload and it can also affect the renal function negatively so the fluid overload again giving too, too much fluid enthusiastically is not going to help our patient either. So we have to do a calculated uh, uh, intervention and the surviving sepsis guidelines recommend a minimum of 30 ml per kilo uh, of IV fluid and you don't want to give too much as I said and uh, aiming for either neutral sir, or... Uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt in between, sir. Yeah. Sir, yeah. can we like a little bit wrap up a session... Uh... Bit faster, sir. Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, it's one hour, right? Uh, yeah, sure, okay. sir. Because yeah, we have yeah. one more session at six o'clock. Yeah, so. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we'll. I think we need to be a little faster. Yeah, sure. I'll do that. So, um, so we need to uh, either target neutral or negative fluid balance because this results in lesser requirement of ren uh, renal replacement therapy. And what type of fluid should we give? And crystalloids are preferred over colloids. And then, which colloid? Colloid, albumin is safer, and we are supposed to avoid starch because there are there is a lot of information about the negative effects of uh, starch in our kidney function. So we have to avoid starch-containing fluid. Hydroxyethyl starch is sort of no no. And then, if you have to give colloid, probably albumin. Uh, so al al albumin is the safer option. And then we have crystalloids. Do we go for normal saline or other uh, balanced salt solutions? For the fear of uh, hyperchloremic acidosis or met uh, one form of metabolic acidosis, uh, there are uh, studies saying uh, normal saline, uh, that is 0.9% saline, which is not really normal, uh, has negative impact on the renal function and uh, long term uh, renal replacement therapy. But at the same time, uh, there are studies to support the opposites uh, as well. So as of now, both saline and balanced salt crystalloids are acceptable choices because the saline is of less expense uh, is less expensive uh, compared to balanced salt solutions. And in kidney patient uh, brain traumatic brain injury, uh, saline is preferred uh, than balanced salt solutions because of uh, influence on the mortality. So you can use both, uh, both, or you can use combination of both normal saline and uh, balanced salt solutions, depending on the situation. And diuretics, diuretics as such has no role in AKI except for treating the fluid overload. So you, you, it may theoretically look as if uh, the diuretics would offload the burden on the kidney, but uh, uh, RCTs never showed that. Um, Crucemide prevents AKA or used to treat AKI. So it's only used for treatment of fluid overload. So take the help of diuretics, give a um, shot, and then get the patient negative or neutral balance, release some fluid overload. And hemodynamics, managing hemodynamics plays a major role because you would like to increase the renal perfusion. So how do you do that? Your patient is in shock and you want to maintain the renal perfusion. And the, unfortunately, many of the uh, agents that we take, that is uh, vasopressors or inotropes, they cause both uh, um, contractility of the heart is improved and vascular resistance is improved. And the increase in the vascular resistance is not just restricted to the periphery, but also 
the viscera viscera is affected and uh, so if the renal vascular resistance is increased in spite of increase in the mean arterial pressure the renal blood flow may not increase here so that is uh, you can see here arterial vasoconstriction and uh, the afterload increased if impaired lv function that would reduce the cardiac output and uh, the mean arterial pressure if it is increased the renal blood flow is improved and um, here you want a, a increase in the renal blood flow here so vasopressors uh, you can use and you can choose the vasopressors based on the um, uh, the their path physiological properties so what you want is increase in map as a part of your shock treatment and most of the vas active drugs they increase mean 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 arterial pressure and what you want as far as kidney is concerned you want increase the renal blood flow and uh, urine output is a surrogate marker so you have both norepinephrine and um, vasopressin which increase both renal blood flow and uh, renal uh, urine output um, and uh, we all know that norepinephrine is the first line vasopressor in treatment of uh, sepsis and dopamine earlier in um, early 2000 probably uh, it was used as a renal protective or renal dose of uh, dopamine which is no more supported and you may see some people still talking about uh, renal protective dopamine infusion uh, which is not the case and it is out now and uh, everything you can do with dopamine is done by nor norepinephrine so you don't have to use dopamine in our intensive care and epinephrine that are adrenaline increases both cardiac output and perfusion pressures um, and but again because of its negative side effects like hyperglycemia acidosis and hyperlactatemia uh, it is not advised for uh, use and what are the modifiable risk factors related to critical care? So you avoid fluid overload and you avoid nephrotoxic fluids and drugs, avoid hyperglycemia. And when coming to me mechanical ventilation, lung protective, low vol tidal volume ventilation as per a ARDS network is useful both for kidney also. And that is because um, um, you have bio injury um, that that would help uh, that would uh, damage both lung and kidney so go for lung protective ventilation avoid fluid overload avoid nephrotoxic drugs and hyperglycemia so we have a care bundle approach it's not just one single intervention that uh, uh, you you have uh, to save your uh, patient's kidney so you identify high risk patients and discontinue all the nephrotoxic agents when possible, ensure volume status and perfusion pressures, and avoid hypervolemia or overloading. And consider functional hemodynamic monitoring that is like monitor mean arterial pressure closely, monitor serum creatinine and urine output. And this is part of our ICU care anyway. Avoid hyperglycemia. And when you have to go for radio contrast, go for a safer radio, um, uh, safer contrast material like iso osmotic. Uh, contrast and then go for non-invasive diagnostic workup and think before going for invasive diagnostic workup and um, in stage two check uh, for changes and uh, drug dose so if you have patient's creatinine high modify the drug do drug doses according to the creatinine value you can use many available medical calculators and consider renal replacement therapy as a part of this uh, care bundle and if the patient is not well, take the patient to ICU and avoid subclavian catheter insertion if possible. This is there in the Kidigo care bundle, but I couldn't find uh, the reasoning or logic behind this. Pro probably you can look for uh, yourself about uh, uh, the reasoning for this uh, uh, suggestion. And, and does every patient uh, with the AKI? need RRT and what is the right time of doing RRT. So a AKK trial and uh, uh, SART AKK, AKI trial, these are trials which looked at appropriate timing. Is there any difference between early intervention with RRT or delaying RRT is beneficial? 
So delaying RRT is probably beneficial uh, because these the good number of patients, significant number of patients, they ended up having lesser uh, days of dialysis when they were delayed with RRT. But only thing negative about this is delaying treatment and worsening is an independent risk factor for patient's mortality. So keeping that in mind, you can delay RRT as much as possible as long as the creatinine metabolic acidosis they're not alarmingly high. So, uh... so oh, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think one just one more slide. Early recognition uh, of, and treatment of AK is important. That would save nephron, many nephrons and prevent progression of disease. And treatment is aimed at minimizing further damage and provide support to care until the kidney recovers from in, in its functional function. And uh, maintenance of circulating volume, prompt relief of the uh, up, 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 outflow obstruction would help, and avoiding all the risk factors would help. Okay, we'll stop here and. Uh...